Greetings champions, this is Jason Paradise, bringing you a match from our recent Road to Paris August Online playoffs between Sirius and LR Horror. These players are playing for the opportunity to go to the August playoff grand finals where a shot at Paris and the World Championship is at stake. Both these players had really rough matches on their way to the semifinal. Sirius taking on competitive players such as Der Urklebar and Offensive, whereas LR Horror, on the other hand, had to take down Alexi K and Good Job 666 to make it to this point. As we can see from the very start of this match, Sirius is playing uh, more of a Nurgle Slowpoke deck, uh, something that is very strong in the current meta, whereas LR Horror, on the other hand, is also playing Necro but is playing a Seria deck. So more than likely a little bit more fortune and creature focused as we can see also he has the Tame Spirit events currently in play. So not going to be a very effective card to have in his deck versus this Nurgle who's going to be playing fortunes and spells trying to protect any damage from going across him while poking down with POW Deathseekers, reviving them with Atropos, and keeping the board clear with things like Throw. So, if you've never seen a deck like this played, the strategy that Sirius is going to be applying is trying to clear the board, lock the board out with Wasteland, where you cannot play any creatures, uh, or if the board gets to an unmanageable state, playing Throne of Renewal, which will clear the entire board of creatures, uh, spells, whatever might be in play. On top of this, as you can see it come into play, Week of Austerity is being featured in this deck. Anytime those creatures are getting to be a little bit too much, that's going to take a little bit of damage off of LR Horror. And we can see again, Sirius is going to basically try to keep the board clear. Using a broken bridge, he's going to put those creatures right back into LR Horror's hand. The kicker here, the final thing to mention, is that Sirius more than likely has what's called a Tower of Oblivion in his hand. This will allow him to deal damage directly to his opponent based on the number of cards in his hand. So he is going to not worry as much about putting creatures on the field, in fact he probably has none whatsoever aside from POW Deathseekers and uh, perhaps even on Atropos. Um, he is going to focus specifically on controlling this game with spells and fortunes. Speaking of fortunes, we can see an altar of shadows coming into play. This is a little bit of uh, an interesting play. He doesn't even want to take any damage whatsoever. Normally you'd see players with this kind of deck say, okay, I'll take two damage from that vampire knight. Not a problem. And uh, he said, nope, not at all. He opts to play that card right now, which stops all attacks from happening. And again, very, very aggressive play from Sirius, who uses a throne and puts those two cards, those two creatures, right back into LR Horror's hand. You can tell he's very comfortable on this deck. On the other side of things, however, LR Horror, using that POW Deathseeker, is doing a little bit of damage. That's how he's going to be able to um, come back and actually win this game, is he's going to have to poke when Sirius's defenses are down, after a throne, when there's no stone shield up. However, it looks as though Sirius is trying to lock his opponent out right now. He has played a stone shield to prevent damage from the creatures that are currently on the field, as well as a wasteland to stop any more aggression from LR Horror. Sirius is just trying to control. He wants to be dictating every move that LR Horror makes. Again, plays a stone shield, protects him from damage that is currently going to come from the creatures on the field, and then puts a wasteland down so that no other creatures can be put out. This means that LR Horror is not going to be able to do anything cheeky, uh, such as fill the board with creatures. Um, this is a very smart move from Sirius, who does not have any thrones in his hand, and uh, is wanting to keep some of his wipes and his altars just in case. The altar that he has in his hand, the altar of shadows, while that prevents creatures from attacking, isn't perfectly safe. Because if Saria has strength of the sea in her hand, that means that it could bypass that altar with fortune ward. 
Strength of the Sea is a card that you see very often in Saria decks, and that would prevent um, the effect of the altar from having any any sort of worth for Sirius whatsoever. We see that POW coming out, and right now, this was just a trade from Sirius. He said, okay, I'm going to still poke you with this POW and take a little bit of damage from your creatures that are currently out on that field. This Vampire Knight, this Lamasu, I feel like I can do better in the long run. There's that Strength of the Sea we were just talking about. And Sirius Legion coming out. LR Horror is playing this absolutely beautiful versus this stall deck that Sirius is bringing to the table. And suddenly, Saria is in complete control. Only seven life left on our Nurgle player, who is now going to wipe the board and lock. He just used two Insect Swarms, which clears the board of the two creatures, and it has locked out Saria from playing any other creatures. There's a fortune! Wow! That Pow Deathseeker just punched Nurgle right in the face. Only three life left on this Sari uh, this Nurgle player that Sirius is, is, is just trying so hard to control and, and make sure he can keep his tempo, and he is losing it. 16 life left on LR Horror. This strategy is not paying off for him right now, but he is going to lock creatures out again. And he does have a Stone Shield out, which means we cannot see another, even if he has a Sirius Last Order like that, just like we had mentioned, he's only going to be able to clear that stone shield. If he has one more, though, in his hand, this is GG next turn, simply because Nurgle has only three life left. He is going to dispel that strength of the sea, play another stone shield, and he's going to start poking on his own. There's a pow, going to take three damage from himself, using a broken bridge, brings it right back into his hand. This is crucial for Sirius, who is counting on every single card draw. There are quite a few cards still on the board for LR Horror. So, so this could be a turning point in the game right now, as we already know that Strength of the Sea is in the graveyard. Alter Shadows comes out, so Sirius has no way to bypass that fortune board. That stone shield, very crucial there. It's going to prevent damage this turn. The Throne of Renewal in Nurgle's hand is not safe. Even if he puts everything back into Saria's hand, a Pow Death Seeker loses him the game because that throne will also clear the stone shield. And we do see Tower of Oblivion in Nurgle's hand right now, which means he can do damage based on the cards currently in Saria's possession. He is going to opt to use the Insect Swarm, is going to clear a pathway to Saria. Pow Deathseeker comes out. This is going to take three damage down to nine health for LR Horror. That Tower of Oblivion is going to clear his hand, brings him down to four health as well, and suddenly it is all even. This is absolutely critical for what Sirius top decks on this next turn. LR Horror is going to use Revised Tactics, trying to clear out for his next possible pull, things that will help him. He's going to banish a few cards. Lamasu comes out to block. But, depending on what Sirius pulls, this could be the end of the game. He might not have any choice but to use Throne here and hope that LR Horror does not have a pal. Oh, wow. That was another potential misplay there from our Saria player who uses another creature, puts it out on the field, takes a damage from Week of Austerity. It is three all. There is a broken bridge coming out. Gonna clear a path. That's actually going to potentially be the game because he is using an Asha uses all to pull back an observatory and there is a Sirius Last Order coming out. Pow Deathseeker. That is going to clear the way to a victory for Sirius in this first round. Who pows him to the face. Wins this first game with three life remaining. Let's hop right into the second game. As our Nurgle player is currently up 1-0 to zero in this best of five series. We've seen what that Slowpoke Nurgle brings to the table now. LR Horror needs to play similarly to what he does, but perhaps a little more cautious. Even the move he just did, putting down that Lich, that was a little bit tough, because there were two weak of austerities on the field, he took two damage. Just because he's playing a creature, he's suddenly behind in life. And Sirius's hand here 
is ridiculously aggressive. He has two wastelands. By the tenth turn, he can play something like two insect swarms, uh, which will make sure that there uh, is nothing on the board, and then lock him out with those wastelands. That's ten action points. Six for the two insect swarms, four for the wasteland, and just lock. Uh, and continue to use POWs and uh, the tower to win the game. This Nurgle deck is specifically made to counter creature and other decks that are looking to just brute force. You want to control with this, whereas the Saria deck is much more about uh, using fortunes such as Broken Bridge and, and uh, the Strength of the Sea combo, or maybe even Geysers, a couple spells, to keep control of the board. So two definitely different playstyles here. And this Nurgle deck exceeds at dealing with creatures. So Saria is kind of playing at a little bit of a disadvantage here. LR Horror needs to be very cautious in how he plays, because going down 2-0 in a best of 5 series is brutal. You need to be able to have at least that even point, take it back 1-1 and say, okay, I know I can beat him now, let's just finish this series out. Unfortunately though, it's going to be very tough as these stall decks are so hard to counter. Throne of Renewal is coming out. This will clear the board and put cards right back into Saria's hand. And there is a very good card to be playing right there. Another POW Deathseeker pops out and is going to keep life control, at least in LR's favor, right now. As he is up by four life points. But we're getting close to that tenth turn. And ten, turn 10 is really where things turn around for these Nurgle decks. Two Insect Swarms and a Wasteland. You see already he has two Wastelands in his hand. That right there means an absolute mugging is in the works. Because he can lock and then use an Asha, uses all, to continue to lock. But Ceres Last Order is coming in from LR Horror, another POW Deathseeker. He is powing as many times as he can because he needs to whittle this uh, Nurgle down. Whittle him down as fast as possible. Uh, there is another Wasteland. All he needs is one more turn. There's one right now coming out, and he is going to start this lock. He does not want any creatures to come out that have more than six life. He uses one of his Insect Swarms, and he's very smart play there. He's going to use the poison counter so that he takes two less damage. Actually, it would have been only one less damage because the tame spirit coming out, one of Syria's own event cards, would have been working against her. But this could be the game right here because we are at the point where he is going to be able to pretty much infinitely lock Syria from playing any other creature cards. First Wasteland's coming down. We see two POWs are in his hand. And there's not going to be much that Saria's going to be able to do, aside from fortunes. Saria's last order. There's two damage from a Lich that's going to be banished after this play. Another Wasteland coming out. Again, keeping up that aggressive locking. Here comes a first POW, bringing Saria down to 14 life. And we are going to see him pull back with his Asha uses all another Wasteland to continue the lock next turn. This is pretty critical because unless LR Horror can get rid of some of those cards in his hand, there's a chance that Sirius could use that uh, observatory that's in his hand currently to pull out a Tower of Oblivion and use those cards in LR Horror's hand against him to deal damage and potentially win this game and go up 2-0. There's something else that's really going to hurt Saria. A Stone Shield comes into our Nurgle player's hand which is going to prevent damage from coming against him. There comes that observatory. I'm sure he's going to pull out a Tower of Oblivion. No, he goes for the Saria's Last Order. This is, or Saria's Legion, I should say. That way, he can continue this POW abuse that is coming. So we will see him play another Wasteland, I'm sure, this turn. Continue that lock. And there is Saria's Legion. He is going to have four total POWs, which means this is almost the game right here. The lock will continue, I'm sure. 
He is going to pull out the Tower of Oblivion as well. Actually, he doesn't even need to continue locking. That's the game right there. 10 damage from the tower. That is GG. Second game goes to Sirius again. Wow. Amazing play. Let's go right into game three and see if our Nurgle player is going to be able to close this series out. He is up 2-0. Phenomenal play being able to lock out LR Horror from having any sort of impact on this game whatsoever. LR Horror is absolutely blindsided right now. What can he do to come back from this 2-0 deficit that he has put himself into? Sirius is one game away from going to the August playoff finals where he has a shot at going to Paris and the 2013 World Championship. Can his Nurgle Slowpoke deck bring him to the potential World Championship? This has a lot of tension on the line as he is trying to stall out one more victory. LR Horror in this game 3 is already using Revised Tactics, adjusting his deck. That Revised Tactics allows you to banish three cards that won't be of use to you against the opponent that you're playing. Always a useful card, no matter what. You can adjust your deck. On the other hand, Sirius, with his deck, he does have a couple Earthquakes. Those aren't going to be as useful against flying creatures like the Lamasu currently in play. He's obviously thinking about what he wants to do. Puts another point into his fortune, his destinies. He wants to be able to play that throne if more creatures come out. We do see one Earthquake being played. Takes the Lich down to half life. Lamasu and Lich both pummeling Nurgle right in the face. And again, a pretty decent life lead for Arceria player. But that doesn't mean too much as we've seen from game one and game two. She had great advantage throughout early and mid game, but as that Nurgle deck gets to that late game where it can just stall, it's where it shines. That's where it absolutely shines. So, again, can Nurgle pull this out? We see him put another point into mech, and there is a stone shield coming into play which will prevent any damage on him this turn. Saria does not have the Schools of Magic to be able to dispel that shield, so he's going to have to just hit him with some sort of creature to be able to disable that shield and put it into his graveyard. We see quite a big field of creatures coming in, but again, Nurgle has another throw, and he'll be able to put all those creatures right back into Saria's hand. Uses a celebration event first, wants to both increase the number of cards in his hand and his opponents. That is crucial because, again, Tower of Oblivion can come into play and use those cards in uh, as basically a weapon in your own favor. Turn what could be weapons that, uh, you know, against you into your own weapon. So, LR Horror desperately going to need to get some of the cards in his hand out onto the battlefield or into the graveyard. So Tower of Oblivion does not come into play. Is that Pow Deathseeker going to come out on the field? No, Gold Mine used instead. I'm going to sacrifice one damage on himself for three damage onto the Nurgle player, and suddenly seven life has been swung in the favor of our Saria player. This could be another lock. We see the Broken Bridge come out. There's a Wasteland, and we do see Celebration as well. This is potentially the series right here, as there are so many cards in Saria's hand, and... We see more fortunes coming in, so POWs are going to be in the hand. If the lock cannot hold, Saria has a chance. But we do see another Wasteland in our Nurgle player's hand, which means he is going to be able to continue this at least one more turn. Shantiri Ruins pulls back a Stone Shield. That's going to come out onto the field as well to protect him from any damage that could be potentially put down. Another Wasteland comes into his hand. Perfect draw from the Celebration event. Tower of Oblivion looming on the horizon. This Saria player is in trouble. This is looking like it could be a 3-0 sweep for Sirius, who is looking for a bid into the August playoff finals. We see a couple of Pow Death Seekers. The lock is going to continue. I can't see any way our Saria player can turn this around. 
I am not sure if there is any way possible for him to break this lock. Another Wasteland being recycled from an Asha uses all. Pow Deathseeker taking another 3 damage. Only a 7 life disadvantage for our Nurgle player. Who is going to recycle another fortune? Potentially no. Decides to pull another card out of his deck instead. That Dispel Magic is not going to be of much use here. But it doesn't really matter. I don't believe so many cards in our Saria player's hand. There is still an Observatory in Nurgle's hand. Another Wasteland there as well, so no creature is going to be able to be put on the field if he opts to go that way. Pow Deathseeker comes out, brings our Saria player down to 12 life. Is this going to be end right here? We see the Observatory pulled. He is going to grab that Tower of Oblivion, brings it into his hand. Asha uses all to recycle another fortune. What is he going to pull out? He is just actually using those to throw cards away. That is what he is doing. He's putting those Ashes into his graveyard so that he does not take the damage. Tower of Oblivion, that is going to be the game. GG, Sirius takes this series 3-0 to zero and will be advancing to the August playoff finals. Thank you guys so much for watching. Jason Paradise here signing off. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel here for the latest replays as they hit. And we will see you back here for another series very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.